Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. This week I'm in Northumberland National Park and behind me there is Hadrian's Wall. This week I'm here for a very special event, the opening of a new observatory at the Twice Brew Inn. I've been invited by Will Chung to give a talk, but today he's going to be my special guest answering questions about the observatory and the stargazing events that are going to happen here. <laughs> Hello Will, thank you so much for coming to talk to me. Oh no, you're welcome, thanks for having me. Um, so to start, maybe just tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, sure. So, um, long story short, uh, as a, as a seven year old, I got really interested in uh, astronomy. Uh, Patrick Moore was on TV and Voyager probes were flying by the gas giants and I got really interested. And, um, as a 12 year old, I went to school and to visit the, um, careers advisor. And she said, what do you want to do when you're older? And I said, I want to be an astronomer. That's all I want to do. I want to study astrophysics. And she said to me, um, no, like, don't, don't do it. And I said, what? And she said, well, they only make about £12,000 a year. That's, that's what she <laughs> said. And at that point, as a 12-year-old, I was thinking, oh, I didn't realize it was all about money. So, that, so then I decided, right, well, if it's all about money, I, I guess I better study business. So that's what I did. I studied business. Ended up having a few businesses, but always having that passion of astronomy and always thinking, you know, what if I, I studied astrophysics and, you know, you, you all these discoveries and the new technology and things. So about eight years ago, I started volunteering at an observatory nearby and it was just amazing. I mean, I was working effectively 20 hours a day, working in my normal day job and then, you know, helping out this observatory and just having no sleep but all the energy to, to p deliver these events. That's like all astronomers. And, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sleep. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it just got to a point where I realized over time that is definitely what I need to do, you know, even though it's taken so many years to get there. So, um, and here we are at uh, Twice Brewed Observatory. Yeah, um, so you know. you've just launched this um, Twice Brewed yeah. Observatory yeah. and we had the launch party um, yeah. just last night. Yes. Um, how about you tell us a little bit about uh, the observatory itself and yeah. like the events that you're going to run? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know, first of all, the Twice Brood Observatory were based at the uh, International Dog Sky Park in Northumberland. Right. And um, I guess, I guess, maybe the the whole businessy thing has helped because um, through networking, I approached the the owner and said, "Hey, you know, you should have stargazing events here because." In the Dog Sky Park, you know. And, what does that um, mean, actually? So, yeah, so what, what happened was um, there is strict controls over um, lighting, whether you are building a house or a building or anything else. Um, it is, there's regulations to ensure that you're not going to be having lights shining up in the night sky because with the National Park, first of all, it's actually one of the most least populated places in the UK. So that's probably one of the big reasons why it was good to have this Dog Sky Park thing. But we want to protect it and conserve it so that people like ourselves, we can enjoy the night skies. But actually, more importantly as well, is wildlife get massively affected by light. And uh, we just want to protect this whole area. And um, about in five, six years ago, just over five years ago, they got the dog sky status. So this organization based in the States, we, they give designations for how dark this area of, you know, whether it's a park, whether it's a huge reserve or whatever it is. And Northumberland got the gold tier, which is the best. Wow. In, you know, and so we have the best, officially the best in the darkest skies um, in the whole of the UK. Wow. Um, so it's absolutely amazing. And so I approached uh, the owner and yesterday was our <laughs> um, official launch. We've actually done quite a few events now, um, over 16 events, it's kind of testing it out and seeing how it goes. But um, no, it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, thanks for, for coming as well. You know, I really enjoyed your company and we had many guests and the skies were so clear and it was just absolutely amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. So um, people who live elsewhere in the UK, if they want to get into astronomy, um, do you have any words of wisdom for them? Yeah, well, we, um, I co-founded with a friend of mine, Neil Sanders, uh, Go Stargazing. Uh, which is a website and a Facebook page as well. And what we do, we're not for profit, but the idea is that you register on our site 
and you can you tell us where you live and what you're into. So whether it's stargazing, whether it's astronomical talks, and we will email and notify you, if you wish, of any upcoming events. Now, if it's stargazing events, then we can also add the weather in there as well. Yeah. So you're only notified if the weather's looking favorable. And it means that pretty much, pretty much with the whole of the UK covered, that if you want to, to get into astronomy through talks or through stargazing, yeah. you go on our website and then you can find out where your local astronomical society or event is. Right. And, and that really was what Go Stargazing is about. It's about for the general public to get more interest into it and experience it. Okay. And do they need to bring their own telescopes? Do they need any like knowledge about telescopes to do this? Yeah, well, there'll be some places where you're welcome to take telescopes. Um, certainly, you know, we, we have often, <laughs> when we do talks, we ask people, you know, has anyone here got a telescope? And I'm, I'm telling you now, you know, in nearly all cases, um, people put their hands up and say, yeah, we have a telescope, but they say it's in the attic. You yeah. know, we don't know how to use it. So um, and we always say, go to your local society. They will be more than happy to help you set it up. And in, again, in some cases, maybe observe that very night as well. So, um, and uh, I find that astronomers are a friendly bunch. We're more yeah, than happy, we you know, <laughs> absolutely. We're more than happy to help you guys out and stargaze, you know. Yeah, you know and how, pick how out like is. telescopes if you don't know which ones to buy. Absolutely. It can be yeah. a bit of a minefield sometimes. Yeah, there's so many. Oh, so many different types. And, you know, we... On our website, there's a, there's a page, that, you know, what we recommend and we yeah. think is, is suitable for people. Is there us. anything you would recommend for people who are new to astronomy, what they can observe in the sky? Well, yeah, I mean, one of the easiest, <laughs> easiest objects is the moon. Uh -huh. And um, I'm laughing because I, I, one of the first thing I had to do as a, a science communicator with this huge telescope was to show these 20 guests the moon. Yeah. And it took me half an hour to find it. It was because this telescope was too powerful that, you know, it's really hard. You know, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. magnified too much. But for beginner telescopes, you know, I always say the moon is great to look at. And, you know, what we say, quarter moon is a good time. You get the shadows, you get the craters, the yeah. mountains on the moon. But Last also, night we observed oh, the moon just, as well yeah. and we could see um, the earth shine. Yeah. So the dark side of the moon is actually illuminated as well. Uh, due to the reflection um, of the light from the moon back off the earth. Yeah. And yeah. that was pretty impressive, wasn't, wasn't it? it? It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, the moon is great to look at. And I always say with uh, with small telescopes, you know, if you, you know, Andromeda Galaxy, you know, yeah. maybe, you know, if it's, what, it's huge. It, it can be overwhelming sometimes when you look in the night sky and they're just little dots. But when you start, Finding the patterns, you know, the constellations as we call it, yeah. you know, Cassiopeia, and you use basically indicators and markers to like Orion's belt, they point to Sirius and um, the Seven Sisters. Yeah. It's, um, it starts to get easier and easier. Yeah. But hopefully, like I say, if you get a telescope, go to visit your astronomical society, it'll help set it up, make sure it's working properly, and then using the finder scope, you know, you can start exploring on your own. Yeah. What's your you know. favorite thing that you've observed? Well, there's two <laughs> things I would say. Um, the first one is um, during the summertime, because this is the thing, is that you see, you see different things depending on the seasons of the year, yeah. and, which is why stargazing is great for all, all around the year. And during the summer months, you can see globular clusters, okay. which are objects towards the center of our galaxy, and they're absolutely stunning. You know, hundreds of thousands of very old stars clustered up together and through telescopes it just looks incredible it absolutely is. incredible yeah. yeah so messier 13 the the, the great uh, globular cluster of hercules that is my my favorite object to look at visually yeah i just think it just looks so pretty and amazing and of course saturn you know everyone loves saturn and seeing its rings but yeah. for me the m13 is just really special um but the most favorite thing most stunning thing i've looked through with a telescope is a quasar about 2.4 billion light years away. So this object, which I didn't at the time, I was very new into stargazing with telescopes. Yeah. Um, we looked at this object and I couldn't believe it's in the billions of light years away. Yeah. So that, it's that, hard, hard to fathom that huge distance as well, isn't absolutely it? absolutely mind blowing. And that's why I love <laughs> astronomy. You know, yeah. you just constantly just 
thinking what that is crazy yeah so, you yeah. also do a bit of aurora chasing as yeah. well don't you yeah. yeah i love it i mean northern lights i always knew about known about them and was aware that they existed but i didn't quite understand how it worked and could you see it with the naked eye or did you need specialist equipment Actually, the first time I seen Northern Lights was in Northumberland. That was okay. the first time I'd so seen it. So you can actually see Aurora from the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, that, the thing is, um, the Earth, the Sun goes through a so, what we call a solar cycle. So it gets very active and it gets very sort of inactive, and it's at its peak and troughs of activity. And when it's at its peak, um, normally during certain times of the year, you can't see it quite far down south. You What's know? the furthest down south? Yeah, I mean, I mean, all the way down. I mean, I, a few years ago, people, you know, Cambridge, Oxford, they were yeah. sending in photographs of the Northern Lights. You know, they could see from down there. But you, you can see it from France, you know, yeah. if it's a, a strong event. Um, but most of the time, I would say that this time of the year, what, 2020? So you have to be really in the Thumberland. I saw it in the Thumberland just a few months ago. It was really? out, yeah, it was out last week. Wow. Um, so you come into Northumberland, you get the dark sort of skies you get the good horizon north yeah. with little light pollution or no light pollution um during a good solar event you, yeah. can, you can see it here but is it as impressive as iceland though no it definitely <laughs> isn't um at the moment it's not uh, okay. because we're at the absolute sort of lowest point of solar activity right and um, you, do, you do get some sort of fluctuations but we think by the year 2023 24 hopefully the sun's going to get really active again. Yeah. So we'll see it in places like York and, and Cambridge, hopefully. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, up here, you see a different type of aurora. It's on the horizon. You can see this band and you yeah. can see some curtains and you can see it moving, you know. Yeah. But in Iceland, it's right above you, like all over and really strong colors, and, you know, because I've been there seven, eight times now and wow. just absolutely love it. Love aurora chasing. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so I think that's all the questions that I've got time for mm. this week. Mm. Um, but hopefully we'll be seeing more of Will in the future because we're going to do some collaborations for yeah. go, star go stargazing. Yeah. And um, so more things to come, more yeah. observing um, videos, what you can see in the night sky, how you can operate telescopes and things like that. Yeah. Um, so that will be coming in the very near future. Um, so thanks again, Will. Okay, uh, thank you. Thanks for having me.